Dear students, we are moving on to the sixth module. Sixth module mainly concentrate on embedded system networks. The first topic is distributed embedder architectures. Let us see what is distributed embedder architecture. In a distributed embedded system, several processing elements PEs, either microprocessors or ASX. ASX means application specific integrated circuits are connected by a network that allows them to communicate. These applications are distributed over the PEs and some of the network is done at each node in the network. That means in distributed embedded system, the basic units are PEs and the network connection between the processing elements. Here you can see two PEs for initial processing that is one for sensor and the another for actuator. And here we have another PE for more processing. This PE will coordinate the overall process and this, this is a distributed embedded system detailed diagram or a example of distributed embedded system. The basic units as already we have seen basic units are processing elements and processing elements may be microprocessor or R6. R6 means application specific integrated circuits and the second basic unit is network connection between these PEs, different PEs, PE1, PE2, PE3, PE4 and PE5. You can see different number of PEs are here. Here in distributed embedded system do not share a common memory. A PE may be an instruction set processor such as a DSP, CPU or microcontroller as well as a non-programmable unit such as the ASICs used to implement PE4. An IO device such as PE1 which we call here a sensor or actuator depending on whether it provides input or output may also be a PE. The network topologies in the figure is a bus but other network topologies are also possible. Why do we use distributed embedded system? These are the advantages of distributed embedded systems. Distributed embedded system can use more than one network such as when relatively independent functions require relatively little communication among them. We often refer to the com connection between the PEs provided by the network as a communication link. The system of PEs and networks forms the hardware platform on which the application runs. Distributed systems are necessary because the devices that the PEs communicate with, the, with are physically separated. If the deadlines for processing the data are short, it may be more cost effective to put the PEs where the data are located rather than build a higher speed network to carry the data to a distant fast PE. In distributed system with several CPUs is that one part of the system can be used to help diagnose problems in another part. When debugging a prototype or diagnosing a problem in the field, isolating the error to one part of the system can be difficult when everything is done on a single CPU. That means isolating the error to one part of the system can be difficult when everything is done on a single CPU. If you have several CPUs in the system, you can use one to generate inputs for another and to match its outputs. And we can see, next we can see the network abstractions. In international standard organization developed the open system interconnection OSI model to describe networks. It's a seven layer network. That means provides a standard way to classify network components and operations. You can see what are the different layers. The first one is physical layer and the second one data link, third network, fourth one is transport layer, fifth one session, sixth one presentation and the seventh one is application layer. You can see what are the different network layer uses. Here Networks are complex systems. Ideally, they provide high level services while hiding many of the details of data transmission from the other components in the system. In order to help understand the networks, the International Standards Organization has developed similar layer model for networks known as open system interconnection models. The seven layer of the OSA model are intended to cover a broad spectrum of networks and their uses. Some networks may not need the services of one or more layers because the higher layers may be totally missing or an intermediate layer may not be necessary. However, 
any data network should fit into the OSI model. Okay, here you can see any data network should fit into the OSI model. Carefully listen, any data network should fit into the OSI model. The OSI layers from lowest to highest level of abstractions are described below. First one is the physical layer. The physical layer defines the basic properties of the interface between systems including the physical connections, electrical properties, basic functions of the electrical and physical components and the basic procedure for exchanging bits. The second one is data lean. The primary purpose of this layer is error detection and control across a single link. However, if the network requires multiple hops over several data links, the data link layer does not define the mechanism for data integrity between hops but only within a single hop. The third one is network layer. This layer defines the basic end-to-end -end data transmission services. The network layer is particularly important in multi-hop networks. The next layer is the transport layer. The transport layer defines connection oriented services that ensure that the data are delivered in the proper order and without errors across multiple links. This layer may also try to optimize network resource utilization. The next layer is session. A session provides mechanisms for controlling the interaction of end user services across a network such as data grouping and checkpoint. The sixth one is the presentation layer. This layer defines data exchange formats and provides transformation utilities to application programs. The last layer, the seventh layer is the application layer. The application layer provides the application interface between the network and end users. These are the seven open system interconnection or OSI model. Thank you.